take stock of your works so this morning open your bibles with me to second corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 9 second corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 9 it says therefore we make it our aim mm. we make it our target paul is saying it we make it our aim our target our goal whether present or absent to be well pleasing to him whether we are with you or with uh, outside whether we are uh, with within the church or outside the church whether we are present or absent to be well pleasing to him our lives are to be lived with one audience in mind and that is the audience of Christ Jesus hallelujah so in verse 10 it says for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done whether good or bad <clears throat> knowing therefore the terror of the lord we persuade men mm. verse 10 it says we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ and this is the bema seat i've spoken many times before concerning the bema seat judgment and <clears throat> but i want to bring some other facet from this okay we must all appear all who are in Christ Jesus all who are saved unto the lord all who are born again by the power of the spirit all who confess that Jesus Christ is lord all appear before the judgment seat of Christ all who are accounted worthy hallelujah appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done whether good or bad now what what are the stuff that is going to be judged the judgment is going to be based upon our works in the kingdom of god from the time you became a born again believer from the time you were saved from the time your work began your clock began my clock began from the time you were saved as we come into the eternity what work did we do for the kingdom we were saved unto good works hallelujah so we are called unto good works and our works will be tested when we go to heaven there is a judgment there is an evaluation of our works on this earth so verse 11 says knowing therefore the terror of the lord mm, this is in heaven our judgment in heaven is before the the bema seat of christ and there the judgment is whether we receive any reward or no whether our works will be uh, will be worthy to receive a reward or not that is where it is getting evaluated and lot of people will receive a loss suffer loss the word of god says some will suffer loss okay because their works will be found out to be wood hay and stubble and some work will be gold silver and precious stones so knowing therefore the terror of the lord what is the terror of the lord you will be i mean when your heart details within the well you have done things you have spoken things from the time you were born again you have said things you have done things and you have worked things all will be evaluated you will give an account of every word every idle word that you have been spoken that's what jesus says every word every action that you have done all will be tested all will be made declare what you have done in the in the secret place it will be shouted from the rooftops so live your life that is why he is you know paul is saying 
we persuade men knowing therefore the terror of the lord we persuade men why do we persuade men hey do not get terrorized when you stand before the lord take a stock of your works mm romans 11 turn your bible with me romans chapter 11 verse 22 it says therefore consider the goodness and severity of god on those who felt severity but toward you goodness if you continue in his goodness otherwise you also will be cut off look at this <clears throat> the goodness of god is connected with the love of god are you hearing me the goodness of god is connected with the love of god and the severity of god is connected with his holiness hallelujah so his love and his holiness is interconnected hallelujah and they are two sides of the same coin and god is saying you need to make sure that you receive of the goodness hallelujah in first peter chapter 4 verse 17 it says for the time has come for judgment to begin in the house of god if it begins with us first what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of god now if the righteous now if the righteous one is scarcely saved where will the ungodly and the sinner appear what a sobering thought by peter he saying if the righteous one is scarcely saved where will the ungodly and the sinner appear we need to be mindful these are days to evaluate these are days to check our lives any time when you go for an exam it is important to understand how the marks will be given out you know there are uh, there are exams competitive exams where there are negative markings so you cannot just uh, go on uh, marking anything expecting that you know chalta hai and i will do you know guess work and i will um, you know outsmart no there are negative markings in some of the exams so what does a good student do first understand how the evaluation is going to happen what are the marks how are the marks given and <clears throat> how will the judgment finally take place so same with us we as christians need to be mindful of our eternal evaluation hallelujah we are on this earth awaiting that evaluation it is not an evaluation whether we go to heaven or hell that decision is right here on this earth hallelujah once you put your place uh, you, uh, your faith in christ jesus if you profess to believe in christ jesus you profess to walk after him you profess that jesus christ is lord and that you surrender your life over to him you shall be saved hallelujah and that's the decision for eternity that is here but in heaven at the judgment seat of christ the evaluation is rewards for eternity rewards just doesn't mean some toffees and some candies that you get on the top and you know some people have come and told me that you know anyway god gives you a crown what do you use it take it and throw it at at christ's feet okay because in another portion of scripture it says the elders and you know um, nail down and throw their cast their crowns before god and worship them so whether you get your crowns or not you're going to cast it before the lord hey listen it's not just that crowns are symbolic of your position and responsibility in the kingdom and that is not a kingdom as a not a temporary kingdom it's an eternal kingdom so you need to be making sure what are you working for how are you working how are you going to appear before the judgment seat of christ hallelujah make sure make your election and calling sure before the lord hallelujah look at this first corinthians chapter 3 verse number 
it says according to the grace of god which was given to me as a wise master builder i have laid the foundation and another builds on it but let each one take heed how he builds on it let each one take heed how he builds on it pay close attention how much time are you giving to evaluate how you are building in the kingdom because there are some people who believe that hey i have booked my ticket to heaven that's about it brother that's about it <laughs> i have done this and the rest of it please allow me to do what i want, would like to do and thanks be to god jesus has saved me it is not by works but by grace praise god you are headed to heaven but may i, I remind you that scripture enough tells you that hey when you land up in heaven do not be terrorized by the presence of god do not suffer loss like lot suffered loss he was saved with the skin of his teeth hallelujah as though by fire look at this for no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid which is christ jesus now if any man builds on this foundation with gold silver precious stones wood hay straw each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it which day that day when you stand before the law at the judgment seat of christ because it will be revealed by fire not by anything else but by fire fire we know that fire consumes but this fire will make revelation it will reveal something what is it going to reveal and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is mm -hmm. if any man's work which he has built on it endures he will receive a reward aha uh -huh. so are you mindful of getting a reward so are you building something that will endure or is it wood hay and stubble which will get burnt up it says in verse 15 it says if any one's work is burnt he will suffer loss but he himself will be saved yet so as through fire mm yet so as through fire are you hearing me saints very carefully sobering god do not allow the presence of god to come and cause you to suffer loss because that fire is going to test everything that you've done on this earth so make sure that you build well hallelujah that you build which are considered as gold silver and precious stones luke 12 and verse 47 gospel of luke chapter 12 verse 47 it says and that servant who knew his master well uh, or master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes but he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes shall be beaten with few for every one to whom much is given from him much will be required and to whom much has been committed of him they will ask the more very sobering scripture verse from jesus himself he is saying that the servant who knows his master's will are you that servant who knows the will of the master aha uh -huh. so then prepare it says that servant did not prepare himself according to the master's will what will happen to that person he will be beaten with many stripes mm aha uh -huh. but he who did not know that person who does not know the will of the master will be beaten, beaten with less stripes who has been given much will be required much from him hallelujah look at that second corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 it says examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith this is paul writing to the corinthian church examine yourself come on <clears throat> i remember writing my board exam in my 10th 
and uh, you know those teachers and those people who were coaching me and all that they used to say you know practice old question papers practice those old previous years questions and then evaluate yourself how you're doing so when the board exam comes you are prepared you are very well prepared are you hearing me if you know how to prepare for a board exam on this earth how much more the eternal exam for which your whole eternity is is going to be judged based on that your whole eternity is hinged on that one evaluation how much more you need to be careful how your life is lived how much and how you build upon the foundation of christ jesus examine yourself test yourselves do you not know yourself that jesus christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified my dear brothers and sisters do not get disqualified but evaluate yourself examine yourself take a test <laughs> take the take the previous question papers aha uh -huh. what are the question papers take the book of the law take the beatitudes of christ jesus take what the gospels declare and you will evaluate your life evaluate according to the doctrine of christ and see where you stand because you got to prepare anyone who lands up unprepared is going to face consequences first corinthians 11 and verse 31 it says for if we would judge ourselves we would not be judged but when we are judged we are chastened by the lord that we may not be condemned with the world god doesn't want you to be condemned with the world god makes a differentiation between the world and you hallelujah at the judgment seat of christ no unclean person will be there no unsaved person will be there only those who are saved will stand at the judgment seat of christ all who are unsaved will wait for another judgment which is called the white throne judgment a thousand years later after the millennial rule of christ all right look at this we want to give you a couple of examples of how a a person is allowing others to examine himself look at it galatians chapter 2 and verse 11 Paul is writing a letter to Galatians and he is giving an example and he is saying how he rebuked Peter Galatians 2 verse 11 it says now when Peter had come to Antioch I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed mm. Paul confronts Peter because Peter was not behaving properly so Paul had to rebuke him how did Peter take it Peter took it well. Aha. Uh -huh. Look at this. Then again, in Acts 19 and verse 30, you will find there are disciples who are telling Paul, counseling Paul not to do what he is intending to do. Acts 19 verse 30 it says, and when Paul wanted to go into the people, the disciples would not allow him. It's in the amphitheater in Ephesus. He wanted to jump in the middle of an argument. of a fight and the disciples pulled him back and says don't go don't go don't go and he heeded to the voice of the disciples about his own mindset we have examples of these two disciples of christ the apostles who humbled themselves when they were corrected they took correction in the in their stride hallelujah galatians 6 and verse 7 it says do not be deceived god is not mocked for whatever a man sows so shall he also reap mm. 
So some people think, you know, I, at the deathbed, I will confess to Jesus Christ <laughs> and uh, I will repent of my sins at my deathbed. I will have time. I will have enough opportunities. No, listen, hey, salvation is now. Now when the Holy Spirit comes, now when the Lord is near, hallelujah, call upon him while he is near. Hallelujah. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, so shall he also reap. Make sure that you reap right things. Hallelujah. According to what you sow, so shall you reap. And today, if you're reaping something not good, evaluate your seed. What have you been sowing? I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about with your words, with your lifestyle, with your character, with your time, with your service, with your attitude. How are you serving the Lord? What are you doing for the kingdom of God? Evaluate yourself. You know, uh, remember Jacob? He wanted the blessing of God so desperately that he goes to his father, Isaac, and he deceives his father. And what does he do? He puts on uh, like, you know, clothes like his saw and uh, wears goat skin. And, you know, he has, uh, he, he makes up uh, hair on his body with goat skin. And, you know, he dresses up like his saw and um, he pretends to be somebody else. And he deceives his father. What happens? Almost about three decades or more later, this is what happens. Jacob's sons. Remember that story when Joseph was put in the pit and they were sold off to the Egyptian traders, the Ishmaelite traders to Egypt. Joseph was sold off by his own brothers. And what did uh, Jake, uh, Jacob's sons do? They brought Joseph's coat and put blood on it and they took it to the father and said is this your son's coat uh, we think he's dead mm. remember what Jacob did 30 years before he deceived his father with a coat <laughs> with a goat's coat more than 30 years down the line his children are deceiving him that his son is dead are you hearing me? God has a way to get at you. Evaluate. What do you do? Be quick to repent. Be quick. If you repent, God is faithful and just to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus speaks a better word than the blood of bulls and goats. Are you hearing me? So no matter what you have sown in the kingdom yesterday, today if you repent, today you come before the Lord and ask God to forgive you, He will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. He is faithful and just to set you free. Are you hearing me? Look at this. Another example uh, of a guy called Sisera in Judges Chapter 4, verse 13, it says, So Sisera gathered together all his cha chariots. Judges 4, verse 13. He gathered all his chariots, 900 chariots of iron, and all the people who were with him, from Harosheth Agoyim to the river Kishon. So he gathers 900 chariots of iron, and he comes against the people of God. And how is he judged? When he is with his pride coming in with chariots. Israel has not seen an enemy like this. And they do not have any ways to defend themselves. And they are in a big soup. And Sisera is coming with mighty weapons. With iron weapons. Look what happens. Look how God plays it out. In the same chapter, verse 21, it says, Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand, a tent peg, a nail. 
that I am male. And went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple. And it went into the ground. And he was fast asleep and weary. So he died. Are you hearing me? He came against the nation of Israel with iron chariots. And God humiliated him by killing him with the hand of a woman. And she took what? Another iron nail and drove it down into his temple. Look at another example. Gideon's son, Abimelech, is an illegitimate son of Gideon. What does he do? He kills 70 of his brothers. Judges 9 verse 18, it says, But you have risen up against my father's house this day and killed his 70 sons on one stone and made Abimelech, the son of his female servant, king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. Now, Gideon's 70 sons are killed on one stone. Look what happens. Judges 9 and verse 53. But a certain woman dropped an upper millstone on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. Aha. Uh -huh. A woman drops a millstone on Abimelech's head. Where did he kill? On one stone, 70 of Gideon's sons were killed. With one stone, by the hands of a woman, his head was crushed. His skull was crushed. Look at it. And verse 54. Look at this. He does not die with that. Then he called quickly to the young man, his armor bearer, and said to him, Draw your sword and kill me, lest men say of me, a woman killed him. Look at the pride of this man. He is not dead, yet he does not want to be named as being killed by a woman. So his pride. So his young man thrust him through and he died. Are you hearing me? Look at another, another example. King Saul. 1 Samuel chapter 19 verse 10. It says, Then Saul sought to pin David. What, did, what was King Saul doing? He was angry. He was jealous against uh, David. That young David. Who was playing the harp. And uh, delivering Saul, King Saul from the demons. That were harassing him. And that King Saul. In jealousy. Took up the spear. And pinned David to the wall. But David slipped away. Look in 1 Samuel 31 verse 10. What happens? Saul is killed in battle. And look what happens. The enemy takes him. Then they put his armor in the temple of Ashtoreth. And they fastened his body to the wall of Bethshan. Aha. Uh -huh. Thus, the way Saul was after David, the same way God recompensed him. His body was fastened to the wall of Bethshan. Whatsoever a man sows, so shall he reap. If you are unrepentant of your sin, God is not mocked. Whatever you will sow, you will reap. And when you reap, you don't reap the same what you sow. But you reap multiplied harvest of what you sow. Look at Samson. Samson had a problem with his eyes. Samson in Judges chapter 16 verse 1 it says, Now Samson went to Gaza and saw a harlot there. What did he see? He saw a harlot. And what did he do? And he went into her. So he had a trouble. He was an anointed man of God. He was a judge over Israel. He was exceptionally anointed. He could take a, a jawbone of a donkey and kill a thousand. Look at that. But he had a problem. He had a problem with his eyes. And what happens? In the same chapter in verse number 21 it says, Then the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. Are you hearing me, saints? The Philistines took out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. 
they bound him with bronze fetters and they began and he became a grinder in the prison look what happens a little later he is in the prison and his hair starts to grow back and god restores him the strength but you know he dies and but even his even as his strength is restored his eyesight is never restored 18 verse 9 jesus is saying if your eye causes you to sin pluck it out cast it from you it is better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire this is not child's play this is not a silly stuff eternity is not silly eternity is not just one sinner's prayer that you do and you think all is well hey hey you can do what you want to do no listen to me evaluate your life evaluate your works what do you do romans chapter 2 and verse 6 it says romans 2 and verse 4 sorry it says or do you despise the riches of his goodness forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness of god leads you to repentance god gives you grace upon grace he fills your life with goodness for what so that you can turn back and repent of your wickedness but in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of god this is paul writing to the roman church and saying look my dear brethren wake up please listen if in your hardness of heart if in your impenitent heart you are treasuring up yourselves wrath in the day of wrath revelation of the righteous judgment of god is going to be revealed unto you on that day that is why paul is saying i persuade men knowing the terror of the lord i persuade men in verse 6 it says who will render to each one according to his deeds according to your deeds it will be repaid to you in heaven listen carefully look at another example i'm going to take a few minutes hear me very carefully look at the spirit of lucifer in isaiah chapter 14 in verse 13 it says for you have said in your heart talking of lucifer satan he said i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of god i will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north i will ascend above the heights of the clouds i will be like the most high mm five times declaration i i i i i yet you shall be brought down to sheol to the lowest depths of the pit mm -hmm. the spirit of antichrist the spirit of satan the spirit of lucifer always exalts yourself look at the parable that jesus spoke in luke chapter 18 and verse number 9 Luke 18 verse number 9 it says also he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others two men went up to the temple to pray one a pharisee and the other a tax collector the pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself pay very careful attention to verse number 11 look to your bible what does it say the pharisee stood and prayed thus to whom he prayed thus to himself <laughs> he is praying into a mirror <laughs> he is having a mirror of himself he is praying into himself he is not praying to god he is come he is coming to the temple are you hearing me he is coming to the temple of god but where is he praying to he is not praying to god he is praying to himself hmm <laughs> 
Sometimes people pray long prayers and then they teach God <laughs> how <laughs> God needs to behave. You know, some of some people I, I hear praying and then they tell God how he needs to behave. <laughs> and it's it's crazy listening to such people praying. Look at it. The Pharisee student prayed thus with himself. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust adulterers, even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Aha, five eyes. Are you hearing me? The spirit of Lucifer working in the man who is a Pharisee. Hallelujah. Jesus says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisee. How are your prayers? What are you up to? Evaluate your life. This is the time, the days of all. Time to look within. Time to evaluate whether your life is in line with the Lord or no. Test everything. Psalm 139, verse 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. What a, what a verse. Hallelujah. Let that be your cry. In Revelation chapter 19, it talks about the bride of Christ. Revelation 19 and verse number 7 to 8, it says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of of the Lamb has come. His wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen. Clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Aha. Uh -huh. Are you hearing me? <clears throat> the bride has made herself ready. The wife of the Lamb of God. Has made herself ready. And she has been granted to be arrayed in fine linen. Clean and bright. For the fine linen is what? The fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Hallelujah. What are your acts? Evaluate this morning. This is the word of the Lord. To each one of us this morning. Evaluate our lives. Take stock of the situation. That you are in. Take stock. Of what you do. How you react. And what you are building. In the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Take stock. Know the condition of your flocks. This morning. Know the condition of your family. Know the condition of what. Building. Are you building. Upon the foundation. Of Christ Jesus. Are you building. With wood, hay and stubble which will be burnt up in the fire? Or are you building with gold, silver and precious stones, which will be standing the test of fire and will be purified and available to you as rewards in heaven? Hallelujah. I pray this morning that as you have heard this word, prepare your hearts because the Lord is asking all around the earth the voice of the Holy Spirit is going out. Prepare, prepare. Hallelujah. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Built up, built up. Make way for the Lord is coming. Hallelujah. Prepare the bride of Christ. Are you ready, my dear brothers and sisters, to meet the Lord in the air? Are you ready? Prepare your hearts this morning. By the power of the Holy Spirit. He loves you with an everlasting love. He has died on the cross for you and me. So that all our sins can be forgiven. All our wickedness can be set free. Hallelujah. Every wickedness can be completely purged out from our midst. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. His blood speaks a better word. His blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Come. Let us eat. Discuss this matter. Even if your sin are like crimson red, he is ready to make it as white as snow. 
by the blood of his son Jesus. Hallelujah. It is completed. His work is complete. Are you building upon the finished work of Jesus Christ? Are you building well? Check and evaluate in Jesus' name.